as you're probably aware, there's more than one way to do HDR imaging inside of Photoshop. And one of those ways is actually inside of Camera Raw. Since Camera Raw 9, you've been able to merge HDR images together. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to choose File, Open. And I'm just going to go to my folder. And what I want to grab is 81. I'm going to hold down the Control key, 82 and 83. So if you have the training here, just look under your uh, Extras folder under Lessons, and you'll find those three images. And these are DNG files, and we're going to click Open. Now these will open up inside of Camera Raw. Now the other way you could do is to just select them from Bridge, right click and choose Open in Camera Raw. You'll get the same result. So here we have three images right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to synchronize these. I'm just going to go up the top and I'm just going to choose Select All. So here's three images. Now, I have actually done a little bit of tweaking on these images. Uh, all I did is I changed the white balance. If I go back to As Shot, this is how they were. And I was able to fix that by simply going up under the eyedropper tool, clicking on an area there that should be neutral, and that removes that color cast. Notice I've selected all three images first, because any adjustments you make to any of the photos, you want to apply to all of them. But now because we're working in HDR, which is high dynamic range, we want to, don't want to change anything in the exposure yet. All we want to do is just clean up that white balance. Now we're going to merge them together into HDR. So click at the top on the film strip and then choose Merge to HDR. Now this window is going to pop up and it's going to show more or less what it's going to look like when these merge together. Now you can change the size of that window, notice. And by default it will have Auto Tone on. So it's actually looking pretty good already. Now you can turn that option off and then do all the adjustments yourself here or turn it on. So why don't we just start with Auto Tone because it's a good starting place. Now deghosting, if you have any movement between shots where you know there's a person walking through and they're kind of only halfway there, you can go through here and you can turn that on or off. So I'm going to click the Merge button now to merge these into an HDR image. Now you'll get your dialog box here, Merge Result, and um, gives you an opportunity to save this because what it's doing is it's actually creating a DNG file. And I'm going to call this one Chi Water because we're at the water in Chicago and I'm going to save that. And now it's actually saving that to disk and you can see the progress bar here as it's saving it. And here we are right now we're looking at our HDR image. So if we look at the regular image and we just play around with the exposure, you can see how much latitude there is there. We take it all the way down and all the way up to brightness and darkness. That's how much information is there inside that image. If we go to the HDR image or the DNG, which is a result of these three images, and I play around with the exposure, notice how much detail we have there in those highlights. It's all there. And then we go all the way up to the shadows and notice how much detail we have available within there. So you've got a lot more latitude to play around with. Notice the highlights dragged all the way over. That's because we chose the auto tone. So if you wanted to do that manually, you could easily uh, do that manually. Same with the shadows, and we could just give it a little touch of clarity if you want. And we're pretty much done right there. So that's how you would uh, create a HDR image right there from within Camera Raw. Now, if I was to just click Open, this would open this as an 8-bit or whatever we have it set at. Notice I clicked that little button there. So if we want, we could set it to 16 and click there. Now, if I open this, it's going to now open it as a 16-bit. But here's an interesting thing. I'm going to show you a little advanced tip here. So if I hold down the Shift key, I get to open this as a smart object. So I'm going to click Open Object. And, uh, and just in a second here, it's going to open up. There we go. So here we go. We have this. It's a 16-bit file right now. And notice it's a smart object. So here's the thing about it is, you know, the 32-bit tools are not going to work in here right now because we're in a 16-bit space. However, if I go under here, under Image, and I change the mode to 32-bit, um, we could choose to rasterize or not rasterize. Um, so why don't we just actually don't rasterize? And we're just going to go there right now. And what it's doing now is it's converting this into a 32-bit image. So here we are right now. We're inside our 32-bit image. And then if we go to our 32-bit exposure now, we can have a look and look at this. All that detail is actually there 
So now we've done this as a 32-bit image. But the one thing you really want to do at this point, I'm, I'm actually going to rasterize it now. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to choose rasterize layer. So now that I've chosen rasterize layer, we have a true 32-bit file that we're able to work on. And we can use other types of tone mapping. So if you have other you know, tone mapping plugins here, such as Photomatics, etc., you can use them right here on this image.